What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be doing a little scene walkthrough of this burning airliner shot that we have recently uploaded a visual effects short breakdown of. As usual, this video is not really a tutorial, but rather just a scene walkthrough going through some of the concepts that helped us make the final composite. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is our scene setup here. It is a fairly simple scene setup. We have our camera down by the uh, ground here. We have a bird system that we've added with our Spiderfy add-on. Then we've added some banners and finally our burning jet at the top here. So the first thing I did when creating this shot was of course track our footage. So in the motion tracking tab here, as you can see, uh, I've just done a very basic tripod track. And as I mentioned before, you can actually do a very basic tripod track if your camera isn't moving through Z space and is just kind of panning and tilting around and it's a little bit easier for Blender to solve those tracks with less points but uh, nevertheless this track was a little bit difficult just because our uh, biker here in the shot ended up traveling through a lot of the track points that I had in the scene originally so I had to keep adding more track points whenever uh, he passed through the frame but uh, I got a solve error of 4.48 pixels which is not really good but since I didn't have to recreate a lot of the geometry down by the uh, ground here and everything was above in the sky it ended up working out all right so tracking this camera was the first thing I did in setting up this shot I've imported that tracking data on our camera here in the scene and you can see our various points here that are uh, you know sticking on our live action shot fairly effectively and it ended up being a pretty decent track but uh, anyways I've separated our scene into several different view layers here as you can see on our top right I have our airliner view layer our burning engine view layer a sparks view layer for the sparks coming out of the burning engine a banners view layer for the banners overhead here and finally a crows view layer and as I mentioned before view layers are super helpful in organizing all of your different elements together in your scene and then in the compositor you can control how all of these elements are added together so the first view layer that we have here is our airliner view layer so as you can see here everything else other than our actual airliner collection containing the 3d model of our airliner is uh, indirect only and then for our banners has the indirect only option selected and the reason for that is because we only want our airliner to show up in this view layer and you can see this in our render view here if I choose a frame where our airliner shows up effectively Effectively, maybe frame 126 if I go to rendered view under the airliner view layer you'll notice that only the airliner is showing up here and uh, also we have a mask of our banners here and the reason for that is because for our banner collection in this airliner layer we have enabled the holdout mask and that's just going to help us composite this jet a little bit more effectively in our scene by uh, you know masking out that banner that's going to be technically in front of it in the scene so uh, that was our first view layer in addition to setting up all of our different elements Elements in their own collection and view layer. In the beginning of my setup, when I added our uh, 3D jet to the scene, I also generally tried to match the 3D environment to the environment of our live action shot here. So as you can see, I have a uh, sun lamp on the top left here that's from the general direction where the sun is in our live action shot. So it's just kind of backlighting our scene here. And then I've also added a very basic HDRI in our world properties tab here to uh, create that ambience that the sky in the live action shot would create for our environment as well. The animation for this jet here was fairly simple. I've just added two different keyframes animating the location and rotation of our airliner here and then turned on the linear extrapolation mode so that it would constantly move throughout our scene and then of course timed it so that it would fly over at the right moment when the camera tilted up in our live action shot. So fairly simple setup here for this first view layer. The next thing we added to our scene was our burning engine. So as you can see here if I go to our next burning engine view layer I've turned on indirect only for all of our other collections other than our burning engine smoke domain here and as you can see if I turn our smoke domain on in our physics properties tab here you can see our uh, burning engine here. And what I've done is I've just added a very basic smoke domain with the chaos fire shader attached to it for some fiery results. And then I've added a fire flow object that is parented to our jet engine here so that whenever our jet flies through our smoke domain here, it's going to start simulating that smoke and fire. So as you can see here, just a very basic fire flow object. I've just used the flow behavior of inflow and uh, no sampling sub steps since the mesh was moving fairly slowly 
properly here. And I've just positioned our smoke domain here around where our airliner would go through in our scene. And then I've baked this simulation at 312 resolution divisions for a fairly large scale looking simulation. It wasn't quite enough resolution to be photorealistic in my opinion, but uh, I thought it was a pretty cool looking result. Um, in the future, I might increase the resolution divisions a bit, or uh, maybe for the noise up res factor, I might increase this to two or three for a little bit more detail in that smoke and fire. But fairly simple setup here. I just baked out that burning engine simulation, uh, saved it in a cache here, and then of course adjusted the flame settings with our chaos fire shader here. And of course you can use a uh, basic principled volume shader as well, which uh, can work just fine. But the cool thing about the chaos fire shader is uh, along with all of these kind of standard settings here, like the smoke density, smoke contrast, flames brightness, flames contrast, and the color of the smoke, you can also change how much the fire comes through the smoke. So for example, if we want the uh, fire to show up a little bit more in the simulation, we can take this black slider and just slide it over here. And now, you know, you can see the fire bleeding into the rest of the simulation some more. Or if you want to dial back the fire a bit and have the smoke a little bit more around the simulation, you can dial it back this way and, uh, you know, just do the opposite there. But anyways, after adding the simulation for our burning engine, I wanted to enhance the simulation a bit with some sparks. So the next view layer that I added was this sparks view layer. And as you can probably guess, all of the other collections in our scene, other than the sparks view layer and our banners here in the foreground, which is a mass cold out layer, are indirect so that only our sparks would show up in this view layer for better compositing. And uh, as you can see here, if I just go to rendered view, you can see the sparks that have been added to our scene through our particle system. And I actually have a tutorial on how you can create this exact effect that I released a few weeks ago. So I'll put a link to that in the description. But uh, pretty much what I've done here is I've just added a very basic particle system and parented it to the jet engine. And uh, as you can see here, if I uh, turn off our smoke domain, just so we can kind of play through it in real time here, if I select our sparks and I'll just grab that particle system, I've turned off the gravity for the particle system so that our sparks would just kind of fly directly behind our jet here. But uh, I'll just turn up the scale a bit so you can get an idea of what these sparks are doing. You can see them a little bit better now. You can see kind of uh, the sparks being emitted behind our jet here. And they're just dying off after about 14 frames, just kind of burning out. And uh, this is just a nice way to enhance the fire of our simulation. And all I've done for the actual sparks of the particle system is I've just created this very basic spark particle here. As you can see, if I go to rendered view, it's just an icosphere with a very basic orange emission material on it. And uh, then whenever we, of course, instance that on a particle system, it creates those sparks around our fire and one of the biggest things you can do a lot of the time to create a more realistic particle system is simply increase the scale randomness in the render tab so that not all of your instance objects are the same size and uh, it can give it a little bit more organic look so uh, that's what we've done here of course these sparks weren't actually this big but uh, that is the general concept anyways after adding this spark particle system the next thing that we added were these banners here in the foreground so I've just added another view layer with just our banners being rendered and all of our other collections as indirect only. And uh, as you can see here, just some very basic banners hanging over our skate park here. And I'm not sure you can really tell in the final result of this video, but I did a little cloth simulation on the banners themselves. So as you can see here, if I select our banners here and go to our physics tab, I've just baked a little cloth simulation on the banners themselves and also added a simple wind force field to blow them around. So you can kind of see them moving here a little Little bit and having a little bit more organic feel but I'm not sure I spent enough time on this to really get the effects to pay off but I wanted to try it anyway maybe next time I'll make it more windy and try to simulate a blowing banner in the wind for some other visual effect shot but uh, I've just added a very basic uh, you know checkered material to these banners here to try to add a little foreground element in our scene here and uh, as you can see here if I can just go to rendered view I'll just show you guys the banners by themselves here just super simple hanging over the uh, uh, foreground here and being lit by our same environment and everything for a little foreground element. Anyways, after adding the banners to our scene, I wanted to add a little bit of life flying by the camera. So as you can see here, our last view layer is labeled crows and I've just added some crows flying by our camera here in the foreground as our jet flies over. I've done this with a Boyd particle system from the Spiderfy add-on. I just selected the crows option uh, named our system here. I originally had about 40 crows, but 
I brought it down to, I think, let's see here, 15 crows just flying by the camera. And they just have a goal over here in the uh, top left so that they would fly by our camera and give a little bit of life to our scene. But uh, as you can see here, if I just play through our shot, you'll see them just kind of flying by our camera here in the foreground and uh, just go off into the distance here. And I think that just added a little bit of life to our scene. And of course our uh, environment is still lighting all of these view layers the same. But anyways, after creating all of these different elements and separating them into their own specific view layers, I rendered them out and went into the compositing process. For the most part, I've just rendered a beauty pass of each of our view layers for combining in our final composite, with the exception of our airliner view layer. For our airliner in its view layer, I've included a combined pass, a Z pass, as well as diffuse, direct, indirect, and color, glossy, direct, indirect, and color, transmission, direct, indirect, and color, as well as an emission and ambient occlusion pass. And that was just because the airliner is the main element in our scene that draws the eye. So I just wanted a little bit more control in the compositing process. So rather than just using the combined beauty pass and overlaying it and kind of color correcting that, I decided to render out all of these different passes for a little bit more control. All right, guys. So in the compositing process, we have a uh, fairly simple node setup here. It may look daunting if you're not used to a node-based workflow, but uh, rest assured, it's a fairly simple process once you wrap your head around some of the basic concepts. Of course, the first input for our composite is our live action movie clip here, and it's just run through a basic scale node to fit our uh, render size and everything. And then we've run it through an alpha over node where we have overlaid our airliner pass. So as you can see here, I'll just add another uh, viewer node here so we can get what it looks like at this point point in the node tree. All right, so up until this point in the node tree, all we've done is just overlaid our airliner on top of our live action footage here with this alpha over node. So behind this alpha over node, we have all of the different effects that we've added to our airliner view layer. So as you can see here, it may look a bit complicated, but I'll just go through each node one by one here and uh, give you the general idea. One of the reasons it looks pretty complicated is because as I mentioned, for this view layer, we've rendered out all of these different passes and then we're combining them individually on top of each other in a very specific way to create our final image output. Normally, I would just take this one little image output and overlay it on top of our shot, for example. But in this case, I've actually, you know, used some of these add and multiply nodes in a very specific way, which I may cover in detail in future tutorials. If you guys want to know how to combine different render passes together, I can cover that in a future video. But uh, pretty much the gist of it is you need to combine all of your different passes here in a way that creates a final image output that is uh, your desired result. So what I've done here, I've taken our diffuse direct and our diffuse indirect. I've added those together and multiplied them with our diffuse color pass. And then I've taken that value and added it to our glossy direct and glossy indirect multiplied with our glossy color pass. And then after combining those main two passes, I've overlaid some ambient occlusion on top of our result here to uh, create a little bit more shadow on our plane here. So as you can see here, without our ambient occlusion pass, you can see that our jet doesn't have quite as much shadow, but then when we turn that on, of course, it uh, comes right back just like that. But uh, to give you guys an example of the diffuse versus the glossy passes here, I'll just turn off the glossy input here for a second and just view the diffuse passes. And as you can see here, this is our plane without any glossy elements added to it. And the whole point of rendering these all out separately is if you don't want any glossy added to the plane or if you want to add a specific effect to only the glossy elements of this view layer, you can do that pretty easily and uh, have a lot more control. But as I mentioned, if you want me to cover how to composite all of these different passes together, leave a comment in the comment section below and I will try to do that in a future video. But uh, after combining all of our render passes, I've mixed our airplane output with the color of our sky here to kind of blend it into our background a bit. So as you can see here, if I bring down the factor on this to zero, all of a sudden our airliner lacks a bit of depth that was needed to bring it into our shot. So by using a mix node and mixing our airliner data with the general color of our sky here, you can add a little bit of atmospheric fall off, which decreases the contrast, kind of lifts the shadows a bit and gives it a little bit more depth as if it is further in the background here where it should be. 
I've also run our emission pass with our glowing engine element here through a few different glare nodes here and overlaid that with an add node on top of our airliner here. And as previously mentioned, I've taken all of this data. I brought down the general levels with an RGB curves node here, added a little bit of despeckle to take away some of the sampling issues, decreased the saturation a bit to match our live action shot a bit better, and then finally overlaid that on top of our live action footage. But that's how we added our airliner. The next thing that we added here was our a burning engine view layer so our smoke element and what I've done here is I've taken our main beauty pass I've mixed it again with the color of our sky to kind of add some depth to our background here I've used a set alpha node to uh, tell the computer which part of this element should be clear so that we can composite it on top of all of our other elements in the scene I've added a little bit of RGB curves here brought down the levels a bit to match it to our live action shot a bit better and then I've taken an emission pass from the same burning engine view layer added some basic color correction on it and a whole bunch of glare nodes as well to overlay that on top of the rest of the burning element so as you can see here if I add this viewer node to this point of the timeline you'll see it's just our glow element that we've added our glow only to the emission portions of this view layer and then of course adjusting this element we've uh, taken it and overlaid it on top of our airliner with its corresponding effects as well anyways after adding our burning element view layer the next thing that I added to our scene was our sparks element so I've just added our sparks through a uh, RGB curves node here I've added some glare to it and a little bit of vector blur to kind of blend it into the scene a bit better and then again just use an alpha over node to add this on top of the rest of our elements here so as you can see here if I just go to its viewer node this is what it looks like composited on top of the rest of our burning elements as well as our plane here after adding our sparks I've added our banners view layer I've run it through a very basic RGB curves node here to overlay this very simply on top of our composite here with everything else and then finally I've just added our crows view layer on top of everything with another alpha over node here to get our final result with our flying crows here in the foreground I'm not showing here in this project file but I also did a very basic rotoscoping job around our character here I just did that using the roto tool inside of after effects and uh, overlaid our composite here with uh, that rotoscoped character so that he would be overlaid on top of our banners here along with everything else and separated from all of our different CG elements that we've added but anyways guys that as the scene breakdown for this shot. Pretty simple compositing breakdown. The way you can think of these alpha over nodes if you're used to a layer based compositor is just kind of overlaying your next layer on top of all of the different elements that you've added before it. But uh, anyways guys that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what kind of videos or tutorials you'd like to see next and I'll see you next time.